Hi, hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to have a couple of handsome fellas talking intellectual about what's going down on the weekend. This is the Working Perspectives Podcast Weekend Pop-In. I'm Matt Lavelle, accompanied by my editor and producer, Tom Byers. We have a special guest today. It's certainly not Stevie Richards. Jake, are you ready to rock and roll or what, my man? I'm ready I'm ready to go. This is a dynamic trio we have today. So hold on. Buckle up, people. Yeah, strap on in and let's get started. All right, let's go. Jake, diggity, diggity, dog, how are thou? Yes, sir. Stevie Richards, how are thou, my friend? All pretty good, you know, just uh, living the center city, Philadelphia life, looking at the rain come down. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys okay. got some rain? Pretty, yeah. Pretty tight over there. Pretty tight oh. down there in center oh, city. You know, yeah, oh, yeah they, have, they have the fancy rain <laughs> in center true. city. Yeah. They got that nice fancy rain. So, uh, what is the sh- shit on a stick? So, we had an interview on Tuesday that will be airing in about a month with, uh, with uh, we won't say his name, but he did recommend what to shake. Do you remember the name of the place that he told us to go get? It's like the crab gravy and chicken meatballs. Yeah, it's, it's, called, some, like, it's somewhere in South Philly. Something. Let me yeah, tell you it's something, like, man. Pino, Pinto's Bakery or something. Go ahead, Jake. When you inter- when you encounter these South Philly people, and I have my mom, I think is like originally from South Philly, maybe, mm-hmm. and uh, one of my brothers just married like sure. a, a, a card carrying South Philly chick. And oh yeah, Kim. Yeah, when, when you run into these South Philly people, man, and they start talking about the the yeah. special spots, and this place is much better than that place, oh, yeah. and. Oh, and they have yeah. these opinions on things. It gets a little intimidating. I got to be honest. That's oh, why man. I feel I feel lucky that we grew up in Lansdale, uh, you know, land of the free, home of the brave. And we only have to, you know, there, there's no question Love about it. the number one spot in Lansdale, you know? Yeah. The belt yeah. holder's been that way for, for decades now, which is no, yeah. Concerned. Agreed. Agreed. So, and you know, everyone, there's contenders, but yeah, there's only one. There's not, there's not every 10 feet. There's another, Oh, you, you go to that bakery. The <laughs> yeah. bread stinks. Try the cannolis. Come on. But it's Juliana's, you know, like right? That, Juliana's in Lansdale. Juliana's is number one, number one by far without yeah. a question. You know, who's a, you know, who's up there though, for me in Lansdale, land of the free home of the brave new yeah. station pizza. Yeah, Love you've been you've been always station. you've always carried the flag for new always, station. always and forever. There's a chick that worked there that I had a crush on back in the day, Lauren Deslande. Hey yo, hey yo. So, all right. <laughs> Wait, can so, I tell a quick uh, new station story once? <laughs> Oh, would love a quick okay. New Station Pizza is at uh, Broad in the corners of Broad and Main Street in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, Land of the Free Home of the Brave Shake. Take it away. And they're now a sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> we get free pizzas from them. Um, so one time, this was a long time ago, probably still in high school, and I've been with my wife for like a million years. So we were still, you know, we were dating already when this happened. So probably like junior or senior year of high school, my wife, my now wife and I went in there and we're having slices and these pizza shops, if any, if you people listening are from the Lansdale area or the Philadelphia area, it's just like your, your standard pizza shop with like the counter and like greasy, you know, messy tables and you know, mm-hmm. a lot of them are just sitting there with like soda machines. Yeah, soda exactly. Cooler <laughs> to be specific. Yeah. And I'm not even really sure why the, like like pizza places need this, but there was like air tanks, like big, tall air tanks um, that like you kind of would use to like fill up balloons or something. They had them like uh-huh. in the hallway where you order. They use them for the soda machines. I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. For the soda machines, they need that. Anyway. <laughs> um I'm sitting there having a slice with my now wife and all of a sudden one of these tanks made an incredibly loud popping noise. Like it sounded (laughs) like it didn't sound like a a straight up explosion, but it sounded like something like the nozzle blew off of it or something. (laughs) And all of a sudden I hear some guy from the back, like some some dude in the back just goes, Oh my God, get out. And, (laughs) And I, I jump out of my chair and I'm already halfway out the door. And I think to myself, ah, oh, shit, I'm with, you know, I'm with my girlfriend here. 
And I'm thinking, do I got to turn around? Because like, if this place explodes and I make it out and my wife, <laughs> you know, dies in like a fiery explosion, my girlfriend at the time, like I, that, I'm not going to live with that. So I thought like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. All right, let me turn around. And I turned around and I grab her like by the wrist and I drag her out of the place. Wait, she, wait, 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 wait. So you started to leave without her? Yeah, it was like it was like the George Costanza. Like, <laughs> yeah, like 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 just by instinct, I was like out the door, like within like a second of this guy screaming, get out. Because I thought Jesus. like the whole building was gonna explode. And yeah. I felt guilty. So I turn around and I grab my wife and I drag her out the door. And she can clearly see that, like, I feel like I'm being inconvenienced by her. <laughs> like, like I'm pissed <laughs> off that I had to do it. And Like, I, I just had to save your life, you pain in the ass. Yeah, so, like, I didn't score points for being a hero and, like, turning around and saving her. And on top of right, all well, of it, <laughs> on top of all of it, that dude comes out after we're all, like, me and, like, two other patrons, maybe, like, four other patrons are standing in the parking lot. And all the workers and stuff, too. All the workers are, like, kind of, like, moseying out. And then the guy comes out who screamed and he's like, oh, I'm just, I'm just fucking with all of you guys. <laughs> That's what hell? I was going to say. I was going to say it was oh a prank. This guy just wanted God. to get out of there. Oh my God. I it's, fucking. And I think oh. that's a great illustration of like what we deal with in, in the Philadelphia area, as far as lack of professionalism and, and oh, yeah. you know, like you go like oh, customer yeah. service out the window, like not even a thing, you know, you call places, but, but, all right, what do you need? It, yeah. <laughs> It is a place that it does provide a lot of stories, though. Like, that is a good yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, know? I, I didn't want to uh, hold up the podcast, but I, I wanted to get that hey, story. it's out. all right. I'd rather talk about that than what we have to. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, what we were what we were <laughs> holding up with an awesome story was last two weeks we had Alex part one and two. Fucking listen to it. Coming up, we got Alex part three. Fucking listen to it. That's Matt's right? brother, by the way. For, for those yeah. who are uninitiated, this is Matt's brother who lives in Chicago uh Chicago. Has, has a bunch of crazy stories um has yep. lived have, has lived what we would call an alternate lifestyle uh <laughs> yep. so, so well i will say this so the last two weeks we've had alex so it's a the four-part alex lavelle experience has been going down in the month of alex and the last two weeks we've had the alex lavelle experience which has been going pretty well Got rave reviews on Alex Avell Experience Part One. Uh, some people saying it's the best work we've done thus far, and I would disagree. I think all the work we've done thus far is the best work we've done thus far. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Part Two was really, you know, was pretty good too. Uh, people wanting more. But in Part Three, we get a we interview Alex again. So what we did was we had two interviews that we broke in half to make four episodes. So part two, the first part of part two is a second interview. So you're going to get another story from me about Alex and you're going to get another memory lame segment. But then also you're going to be introduced to Alex's alter ego known as Xander. Xander. So get ready to meet Xander because he's a fucking psycho. Sounds mysterious. Yes. Oh, He's a fucking psycho. Attempted <laughs> to kill me. Attempted to, yeah. well, just maybe not kill, but maim. Shake, would you say maim is the correct terminology? Yeah, he the, wanted to. He he wanted you to be permanently like disfigured. Yep. 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 Want to be maimed? Want to be maimed? And Matt, people people get seem to get jealous of your looks. You know, they really try to. Happens all the time. <laughs> but yeah yeah but these uh yeah these interviews have been fantastic because as we've as we say all the time on this show we like to uh hit the people with every type of flavor every flavor of ice that's cream it. so that's there's it. incredible highs there's incredible lows some of the funniest and and the really funny parts are especially you know matt with you and your brothers you guys will have mm. some really down there like not cool stories like some really sad <laughs> yeah. or incredibly you know intense stories about trauma or whatever and then yeah. in like the flick of a switch you guys also have the funniest stories <laughs> cracking on each other or or it, yeah or as we'll, you'll see in this you know as we've seen in these interviews is if one of you shows even just like a, a shred of emotion or you know seems like something really bothers you as siblings do seem to pounce on those things and 
and, and make you pay for yeah. it later on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what Alex did? Do you know what Alex did? To, wow. So for all our listeners out there, um, Alex sent me a package. I, got, I, sh- I can't believe I forgot this. Alex sent me a package. In the package, it was a nice card saying, man, thank you so much for having me on the show. Really loved what you said. But then there was a package, a little box. And what mm. do you think? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think this little fucking psycho sent in that box? Huh, Shake? Take a guess. I, I would guess a tasty cake. It was fucking tasty cake. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I opened that box. Oh my God. Flashbacks right away. I was like, do yeah. I eat these or smash them in my face? I don't know. What do I do? Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. that's the kind that's of so psycho funny. we're dealing with. Yeah, he, he is a very interesting dude. He's a very interesting dude. <laughs> By interesting, you mean he's a fucking wacko. <laughs> yeah. He's a yeah. survivor, man. Youngest brothers, you know? Chameleons. Got to do yeah, what you got to do. You guys can put together. We did. How about, though, so I know we don't like to give too much away on the show about uh, people that we haven't aired yet. Mm-hmm. But the last two weeks, the, the interviews we've got have been top notch. And this last Tuesday... How great of an interview was that, Shake? What would you yeah. say? Yeah, I think that... You really know, great. We And what we're really trying to do more of on the show is um, connect like the listener with the actual profession of the person. And I think we've been guilty of that in the past where, you know, someone comes on with a, a specific profession, but really we just like to hang out with them and shoot the breeze. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this, this specific uh, person that we're having on... Um, we won't say his name, but I guess we'll say he works in the automotive industry. And yep. it's it's great because, I mean, pretty much everyone drives, you know, or at least, you know, owns a car or drives or whatever. And uh, and this guy gives great insight on, on, you know, the things that us as novices, we don't know jack shit about under the hood or how mm-hmm. to take care of your car or who's stiffing yep. you, you know, how's your mechanic screwing you. So this episode yeah. um, is gonna is really gonna lay out, you know, yeah. so I'll give a lot of insight you, in that. You are you are one hundred percent right. Where we do we will shoot the shit, but we really got to dig in deep on his profession because, mm-hmm. like, uh, so it, we're not giving too much away. He's an old wrestling buddy of mine, so we did chat about some wrestling, and and we also had some really good stories, some neighborhood stories, things like that, you know, like just fun yeah. stuff. But then, like, there was some stuff that I found that was, like, I've been, you know, we've all been driving cars for how long? And we've been in cars our whole lives and everything like that. And there's stuff that I found out about cars that I was just like, that's just so, to me, it was fascinating. And and really shined a light on a bunch of different things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. For sure. So, yeah. yeah, So, uh, you know, in a few weeks. A few weeks, we'll have it out there. Okay. So, um we do it. You want to do a little memory lame here? Yeah, let's let's take a trip. All right. So uh, like we said, we have certainly not Stevie Richards on the show today. All right, Stevie, uh, we got yeah. a little thing called memory lane. Yeah, my favorite part about it is that you sing it. Yeah, why don't we let St- let's let Steve do the uh, the memory lame. No, I don't oh, think so. Please. <laughs> <laughs> How do I do it? Is it memory sure, lane? Man. Where do these bizarre memories come from? So in English, if you say this is lame, when you're describing something, uh, what you are saying is that it's not cool, it's not awesome, uh, it's not interesting. Is that right? <laughs> oh, baby! Yeah. yeah. Woo! The man. man. Got the Jeez. place. Man, the voice of an angel. So is that Stevie Nicks over there, not Stevie yeah. Richard? That's Ooh. right. Huh? Yeah. Damn All righty. Right. So, uh, so, yeah. So, you know the deal with Memory Lame there, Stevie. If we pick something from the 90s and we discuss to see if it's still totally radical tubular or if it's lame sauce, lame as in not cool. So, as the, uh, as the special guest, actually, and, and historical, historical shake, the mm-hmm. inaugural, First ever guest on the weekend pop in, Stevie Richards. First ever guest on the Sometimes weekend pop in. Certainly not Stevie Richards. Yeah, yep. and that's what you're doing. So 
As the uh, first ever guest and tradition, you get to choose first. What is your memory lame topic? Um, I believe I had a list of topics, which was wonderful. Um, but I chose the Big League Chew as my memory. Yeah. Oh, man. Baby. Big League Chew. Oh, baby. A little grape yeah. Big League Chew, babe. A little grape action there, Oh, that's babe. nice. What do you that's say? Nice. Yeah, what was your favorite yeah. flavor, Steve? I would I would go grape as well, personally. It was the it, grape, which I believe was... is officially titled Ground Ball Grape because they all had corny wow. baseball pun names. Yeah, what was, <laughs> wasn't strawberry one of them, too? I'm looking like it up. Strawberry? I'm looking it up right now. Let's see. Ground Ball Grape. That I is believe that's winner. what it was called. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I remember when I was playing baseball, this is, the, dude, I feel so old just saying the sentence, but when I was playing baseball as a young whippersnapper, you could get a hot dog and a big league chew for a dollar, 50 yeah. cents each. <laughs> That's right. And there's nothing I'm better than, it. you know, that it must have been invented by some kind of tobacco company to try to get the kids in early on the, <laughs> on the old chew. Yes. That's it. This is going to get yes. you in the, in the beautiful habit of chewing tobacco, yeah. but it's going to taste wonderful and it'll disintegrate within 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, fl <laughs> the flavor is gone in That's right. seconds. That's oh, right. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah. I never even thought about that. You're right. Like, obviously, it's a takeoff of, of chewing tobacco. Oh, yeah. It's strings. Yeah. It's strings like it's Big chewing time. tobacco. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I knew that, but like, you're right. Like, they, it's like weirdly they used like the tobacco companies like schemes as well. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, but I, I, ever... I guess it's a little bit more morally, you know, sound considering it's just chewing, you know, it's just gum. But it's of, still like you know, something that kills it's, it's people. It's the same as the candy cigarettes that we used to do too. I used right. to do the candy cigarettes all the time. I love candy cigarettes. Yeah. Love candy cigarettes were all both kinds. They had the gum kind and they had the like yeah. this like it was like a stick of sugar really yeah, yeah like, I, I like the cigarettes now that do you guys remember the the cigars those, oh I thought those hell were really, yeah those were really <laughs> gross in my opinion oh <laughs> i remember those no i'm uh, not saying i like them but i fucking remember them uh, yeah, yeah they're in all yeah. different colors dude and shake are you picturing them on the candy rack at juliano's because that's yeah, what i'm course. picturing in my mind of course. Yes. yeah juliano's yeah Juliana's Deli, and yeah. uh, it's one of the, you know, in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, land of the free home of the brave. Yeah. So, Wait, yeah. oh, I got so, the flavors. Let me do the flavors real quick. Oh, give us a rundown. Okay, so the original is called Out of Here Original, or Out of Here. <laughs> Sorry, Out of Here. Out of Here. Yeah. yeah. Um, ground Ball Grape is the uh, yeah, is the grape one. Uh, wild Pitch Watermelon. Nice. Ooh. Yes. With what I assume is an exact, I mean, this is the likeness of Mike Piazza. Oh, he's yeah. He's got, he's got uh, blue catcher gear on, you know, Dodger blue, yeah, and yeah. A, a profound mustache. And it appears to be an Italian American. Oh, yeah. Know, hairy. Got it. There's nobody else. He's, hairy too. He's, he's as hairy as can be. He's got. He's he's got hair on his on his forearms. That's how hairy he is in this thing. And Mike this, Piazza. Is this for? What ground ball grape? Is no, this, this the is guy wild, on wild pitch watermelon. Which ironically, oh, baby. the the ball is going directly into his mitt. So I think they, they right, they, not a wild pitch. It's not. <laughs> they they should have a, a picture of Mike Piazza like scrambling for for a ball. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm lo I'm looking at it now. One hundred percent, Mike Piazza. Yeah. One hundred. Right. Um, all right, yeah. and then the other one is swinging, swinging apostrophe sour apple, with I, I can't even picture who mm -hmm. this is. Uh, this looks like some kind of aggressive, you know, young Chipper Jones looking dude. Um, <laughs> and then the last but not least is curveball cotton candy uh, oh, is the last one. Babe. And this guy's got some forearm hair as well. Uh, I can't dude, I, swinging I, I, sour apple looks like a, a like a Paul O'Neill kind of jacked kind of dude. Yeah, so, oh yeah, Paul O'Neill's a good pick. That's a good pick. And what, and what hold on, what's the last one? Cotton candy? Cotton candy. Uh curveball cotton candy. Ooh. I think the um, only common thread is chewing big league chew makes you a man if you're a boy and you want to be a yes, man. Yes, correct. Absolutely. Correct. And there's Hall of Fame patches all over this big league chew. I guess they're in the actual baseball hall of fame. Uh, deservedly oh. so. 
Oh, really? So like, like this, I guess Cracker Jack obviously would be yeah. in there. So like, I, yeah. oh, Candy can make the Hall of Fame for baseball. I mean, they have the Hall of Fame seal. I'm sure there's some like <laughs> there some might be a Candy Hall of Fame as well. On. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lansdale well, came. All right. Well, Lansdale, Lansdale, three home of the Brave. Um, and on the original, this man is the the poster child of like the steroid era of baseball. If you guys could see yeah. this guy, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's taking up approximately eighty five percent of the of the surface area of this big league chew. <laughs> and his his teeth are gritting. He's got like the cool you know baseball sunglasses on. And 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 just an absolute monster. So anyway, did did New Balance do? Oh, I think New Balance did sneaker parodies with Big League Chew. That's pretty cool. Oh, uh, I, I I just saw some Chucks, some Chucks dude, with like the Big League Chew people. Dude, on it. look. Okay, so I'm looking at I'm looking at a pair of New Balance shoes that are the Out of Here original New Balances, mm-hmm. and they also had this uh, Sour Apple one. Yeah. New, so wow. Oh wow. Dude, the new dude, the 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 original flavor, that's fucking Lenny Dykstra on there, baby. Yeah, that's yeah, that fucking, gotta be. fucking nails, baby. I was yeah. thinking I that's was thinking fucking nails, babe. Yeah. Well that was the could thing be, with Big could League be Dalton Chew. as well. Yeah, with Big League Chew. Oh Dutch. Love Dutch. We've established that we've all grown up in the in the same area, which means that we all grew up on the the dirtiest of dirty teams, the 93 Phillies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, yeah, they, yeah, they were throwing <laughs> lips. Take, they were throwing lips up, down, and sideways in their mouth. So that's your oh. that was your model for when you had some big league chew. You threw it yes. in baseball oh, size yeah. into your cheek. You threw the whole pouch in. Oh, really, yeah. you did. You threw the whole Dude, pouch yeah. in. Your you cheek. saw like you saw like inky and you that's saw right. crucky and, and nails. They're all yeah. fucking throwing that shit in there. Are you kidding <laughs> me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude, apparently, I remember I, f- I forget who told me this, but Lenny Dykstra used to just leave like puddles <laughs> and like stains out in center field right. at, at the vet. Which you is stains I mean? because they just, played on carpet instead of grass. Yeah. And he's that's just spitting hilarious. the whole time. Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. Dude, uh, I remember. I th- I think it was your brother Kev uh, Shake told me that Lenny Dykstra had like a son who was coming up and was doing pretty good. And then they interviewed Lenny about how his son had like really good high school stats. And Lenny mm-hmm. said like he was in high school that he batted like I mean like a, almost a thousand like he batted like five hundred and he struck out like maybe even higher than five hundred. But he only struck out one time his senior year of high school. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's ridiculous. Well, and Lenny Dykstra is a lunatic, by the That's way. Right. He's, he's, like, he's almost become more famous for his, his, you know, oh, his the Wall Street career. Shit. Yeah. And, and There's... just the interviews that he gives where he, it's like off the deep end. It, it's like sad, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, him, yeah. Schilling, and Dalton was thought aliens were real. Oh, he thought he was yeah. abducted by aliens, and then Schilling um, lost all his money trying to beat a Japanese video game company. That's right. And then <laughs> yeah. um, who's the other? Oh, and, Mitch Williams and other things. Is, a, is a lunatic, is, and other things for Schilling. Yeah. yeah. And Mitch Williams is also uh, some kind of lunatic. I don't remember exactly. But what about Incavilia? What's Incavilia doing? Inky, deflating. Inky was my guy. He took. Dude, in- yeah. Inky, Inky was a straight leg breaker. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if he's out breaking legs for the mob right now. That yeah, dude was legit like like fucking let's go. Like, hey, you want to fuck let's go. Nails was like nails would fight you too. He's throwing guys in headlocks and shit. Yeah. I remember he had, Wait, didn't he nails had a, used to he used to try to he hired private investigators to research the umpires. And yeah. So, <laughs> so so when he would walk up to bat, he would like try to intimidate the umpires. Like he would like maybe like whisper their address or something. Like their home address to them, and in, in a in an attempt to get them to like give him favorable, you know, balls. Oh, and that's great! I know. I remember the one story he told. I think the story he tells about like the headlock when he threw the catcher in the headlock and started pounding him mm-hmm. is that the story he told is that he's batting, and this was like I think like the third or fourth at bat he had had in this game, and he's like this fucking catcher was brown nosing this ump the whole game, just kissing <laughs> the ump's ass, right? And he's like, a call came in. Right. And uh-huh. the 
and a, a call came in and it was like a bad call and the like the ref called this strike and it should have been a ball and lenny was like are you fucking kidding me and the left like rest like kind of and lenny's like look at that fucking scoreboard look at that scoreboard you see what that batting average says four fucking hundred you know what that yeah. means? I know what a fucking strike looks like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then he fucking, and then the catcher gets up and Lenny fucking lets him have it because he's fucking Lenny Dykstra. That's right. Hell Dude, yeah. is there, Little, was, like, when we, when we were kids, was there anything better than the 93 Phillies when we were kids? Anything better? Like, yeah, they were just not incredible. even close. They're heroes. Yeah. Incredible. Now, now I wonder I'm if looking, there, are, go ahead, go ahead. The Steve. types of, I wonder if the parents knew the types of people that the 93 Phillies were and let us watch the 93 Phillies anyway. <laughs> and just, or just didn't care. Yeah, Dude, nobody I know, cared I know, back then. No, I know my parents. Like, I know I can think of two parents right now that were like all about it because I had a baseball coach. My coach, Walt Albright, but it's his dad, Coach Albright, called me Inky, right? <laughs> when I was playing baseball for him. And then my other buddy, hopefully we can get, he's a friend of the show and a former guest of the show, Jason Bowers. His dad was all about it. He loved Crucky. He loved them yeah. all, man. Hell yeah. And he was all, he could get, and like he, hopefully we can get him on the show too, Mr. Bowers. Shout out, Mr. Bowers. Big fan <laughs> of you. Thanks for listening to the show. Yeah. And before we move on, my favorite Philly, I just want to give a shout out to Mariana Duncan. <laughs> my favorite. So, <laughs> when I was a little kid, wait, my, wait, 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 it's not Glanville. Well, Glanville. I mean, they, they, they're co. They both have places in my heart. They both right. have, have nice places in my heart. When I was a little boy, um, I was the youngest for the longest time. This is long before my little brother was born. We went to a, a Phillies game at the Vet, and of course, as you guys know. The vet is like no. gigantic, or it was gigantic. Oh, it's monster! <laughs> and and we would buy the cheapest seats and and yep, hike all, all the way up the top. And then of course the the stadium would be like, you know, maybe twenty percent filled on like an average game. So you would just yeah. kind of mosey down. Mosey like you, down. You try yeah. to get down lower sections, because then like ushers sometimes would yell at you. Sometimes they wouldn't. Um, they they didn't really care. Yeah. And one time we went to a game and we were way up at the top. I guess it was like a pack game, big game. Mariana Duncan um, was at bat, I guess. And I was scared because the top like at the of the vet was like very steep. And I was yeah. a little so boy. steep. Dude, it's like a vertical straight down. Yeah, it was and so steep. Going I up was, the stairs. So I cried the whole game. Um, couldn't take it. I was probably freezing up there. We get really cold. And yeah. uh, my mom took me out. She finally was like, all right, I'll take him out. She holds, holds my hand, takes me out into the, into like the hallway thing. Um, and Mariana Duncan hit like a walk-off grand slam to win the game. <laughs> Oh, brother. This crowd of 46,000 plus has been silent all day to then wake him up. Man, oh, man, a grand slam home run, Duncan. Bills lead six to five. <laughs> and it was like, like a great moment in my family's like, finally, like they were all able to be together for like one great moment, you know, like everyone still talks about it, but they make sure to mention like, yeah, well, mom missed it because Tommy was crying too much. Up at the <laughs> Poor Mariana Duncan. Mariana Duncan, who, by the way, received one MVP vote in 1985, it says here. For him. Wow. wow. Who the hell is wow. voting sure is. Mariana Duncan for MVP? Probably probably Mariana Duncan voted for Mariana <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> anyway. So, all right. So, nice. That's awesome. All right. So, hey, so that was Big League Chew. So, let's vote. Uh, so, uh, Shake Diggity, what is your vote on old Big League Chew? I'm going to – I guess I'll go red. I, ha I think I have to. I've convinced myself now. Cer certainly not Stevie Richards. What is your vote on Big League Chew? Yeah, let me tell you something. I bought a pouch of Big League Chew within the last year. Um, ground ball, wow. of course, wow. and I threw it right wow. in my bottom lip. So it is 100% yeah. red. 
And yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm around. I'm no around. longer has his bottom teeth, by the way. They're, no, they're that's true. All gone. <laughs> All gone. So uh, I'm going to round it off with a Mondo Rad. So we're going to Mondo Rad on Big League Ooh. 2. Love it. Have, spe so speaking of like influencing kids to do uh, drugs and narcotics and alcohol and things <laughs> like that, uh, did you guys ever partake in, in chewing tobacco? Either of you? Never. Really? I did it. I did it a lot. I Well, back in high school, so in wrestling, it was a big thing. Because you know, like you could help you cut weight and you get a little buzz at first. So we were just, like, we were doing chaw, which was like red man, which was like the leaves. We would do them, mm -hmm. and then we would do like like we started with dip, and then we went to chaw, and we would do the chewing tobacco. Yeah. What about you, but Steve? It didn't last for long for me. I kind of kicked it. I kind of kicked it after uh, after high school and just started smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I didn't want to do the dip anymore. <laughs> like a like, good fuck. Boy. I want to smoke. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, Steve, go ahead. What about you, pal? Yeah, yeah, we did it quite a bit. Uh, growing up, it was a, well, not quite a bit. I don't want to incriminate myself, but uh, <laughs> growing up playing baseball, it's like part of the, not the, illegal. Terrible, the terrible baseball culture that, that yeah. you, uh, you were You were play a ball player there, Stevie? Oh, yeah. Um, a little bit, yeah. It should be mentioned Steve, that Steve. You played ball? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, Matt and I are from Lansdale, which is kind Land of, of the free home of the brave. Home, and also home of like the the scrappy dirtbag baseball teams. Like we were, we were yep. just there to like give you a hard time. We weren't there to actually win any games. Nope. And Steve is from Hatfield, which is the opposite. Like they're like a very oh good traditionally like winning, a powerhouse. Yeah. They were yeah, winning yeah, yeah. state championships and stuff. Absolutely. And and speaking of which, Steve, we gave a couple shout outs to some Lansdale, you know, uh, Lando free home of the brave. pizza, pizza and delis. What was your go-to place in Hatfield? In the far end lands of Hatfield. Vinny's is the place. There is no, no place yeah. in the area that makes a better pie than uh, good old Vinny's. And Vinny's has moved. Is that correct? They're no That's longer correct, on that yeah. corner? Well, they, they're, they're no longer on the hot corner. Because they, they blew out that corner and put a what a road there. So they had to yeah. move. <laughs> they were forced uh, to move. No more zigzagging what, through what? there? That's right. What kind of uh, what kind of sauce is on the Vinnies? Because I'll tell you that New Station for those people out there, they have the sweeter style. Sauce. It is sweeter. Yeah, Where it's, it's not, a sweeter. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I like Vinnies. New Station, and it should be mentioned, New Station is like a thicker pizza. Yep. It, yeah. It's it really packs a punch. It's not Pizza Hut thick, but it's it's close. But it's yeah. not. Yeah. There's one. Golly, there's one in like Conshohocken, Bridgeport. Gosh, it's a sweet sauce one. I forget the name. Super famous. I think it begins with an M. Ah, whatever. Either way. So anyway. yeah, really good, really good stuff. All right, cool, cool, man. I didn't know you were a ball player there, Steve. -O. Fuck, what was your position? Yeah, for a little while I was a catcher. Oh yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Didn't right. see that coming. That's I where Steve gets his commanding infield. presence. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You was running that diamond like clockwork, this guy. Have you played? Mm -hmm. When's have you played recently or no? Do you like? Uh, I know I have a couple buddies who play in the adult leagues. Yeah, I played in some of the adult leagues, um, but I wouldn't call it recently. It's probably been a couple years now, but I did play in the adult leagues for a couple years after that. And in those leagues, somebody else wanted to um, be a catcher, and I said. Yep, that's perfectly fine with me because my knees don't particularly work anymore because I did it yep. for so long when yep. I was a kid. So I played the yep. outfield in those yeah. things. But <laughs> those are just fun just fun to just yeah. run around and and uh if you yeah. can get a couple hits, that'd be good too. Steve yeah. Steve yeah. has to protect his knees because he has much more important things to do with them. Specifically, Steve is the greatest golfer that I have seen in person. And I've never I've never wow. been to I've, good lucky for him i've never been wow. to a pga event that's or right. any sort of amateur event that's right but steve if all of you people out there that have like are just oh, amateur yeah. you know for fun golf players my boy steve here will take you to the cleaners every day of the week wow Tell him right now. Yeah. He, he will shots work you fucking fired shots fired yeah all right well, like so, yeah like tom yeah. mentioned he's go, never go, go. seen he's like tom mentioned he's never seen a uh legitimately good golfer so i could no. uh, hold that prestige until same 10 something but I, same i did I that for you steve i day. appreciate it yeah <laughs> okay yeah he's not rushing out to the fucking pga anytime soon I'll tell you yeah. That. yeah yeah uh 
So, okay. So before, we're coming to the top of time, but before we go, does anyone have a recommendation for something for the listeners to the dozens and dozens of Working Perspectives podcast <laughs> listeners? Do you have any suggestions for something to do on the weekend? Uh, Steve-O, since, uh, since you're just a hell of a guy, what are you doing? What do you got for a recommendation for uh, someone to do? Maybe with their friends or maybe with their lady or their guy, oh, whatever. Oh, it is. oh okay. Um, yeah, that's nice of you to let me start. So the um, the Oscar <laughs> nominations came out um, this Ooh. week. So yeah, I was just kind of looking through. I like to is Bohemian um, Rhapsody on there. It's not. No, it didn't make it. It's also like it's four years old. <laughs> no, it didn't make it. That's all. Did, did not make it this year. What but, is okay? So what is, do you do you know? Uh, I God, I couldn't even tell you what's up for Best Picture. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's a bit of a goofy year because no movies were actually really released in the theaters because you can't go yeah. to the theaters. But um, yeah, I'm a bit of a, a movie person, so I like to uh, to go through and watch them. Uh, once the nominees come out, I like to make sure that I watch the best pictures every year. So um, yeah, I'm a little bit farther behind this year, but uh, just because nothing's come out, so I kind of wanted to see what, so, what, what they were. R- real quick. Look, look up. Can you shake? Can you look up the best, uh, best picture nods? And I, I wanted to see, have you ever done this? I know that, uh, the in King of Prussia, the movie theater there, that they used to do a thing where you could buy a ticket to go see all, like they would have all the Oscar movies yeah. in there at one time, and you can buy like a pass and you can go see all the movies one time. Yeah. Right. So have yeah. you ever done something like that? Dude, no, that's I awesome. I didn't know that that you were like because you write too so you do like uh critical columns on the movies and shit like that yeah i used to i I haven't done one in a bit just because i don't go to the the movies i probably could just watch them at home and then do reviews but yeah i do uh i do movie i used to do movie reviews and that was kind of like by the time the nominees would come out i would i would usually have seen more than half of them already just because i would go see movies but this year i've seen i looked at and i've seen one (laughs) Um, and it is it is good. So if we're talking about uh, recommendations, the trial of the Chicago Seven is Ooh, one of the ones that oh, made it the best picture. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah, and it's got a lot of famous what people is, in it, and it's on Netflix, so it's is, easy access. Netflix. So. Okay. Yeah, a so lot wait, of them are easy that, access. Is that, this a year. Ne- is that a Netflix movie though? They're I think like, so, who yeah. made it? I oh, think wow. That, so a Netflix movie is nominated for best picture. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. crazy. Well, what happens is I think a lot of these movies, like this one might be a Netflix, like from the beginning type movie. Yeah. But a lot of them um, were going to be like actual, you know, uh, theater releases. Yeah. And then because of the virus, Netflix just has a shitload of money. So they just yeah. threw some money at it to to put the yeah. Netflix label on it. Yeah, I know that happens. HBO with did the same thing too. Yeah. Yeah, nice, nice, man. So, that's all. So, yeah, Jake, so, what are the what are the what are the nominees? Yeah, so the trial of Chicago Seven um, is and is one which Steve just mentioned as like Sasha Baron Cohen is in it. Um, the one wow. I've seen is uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. I don't think that's. Oh, great. how was that? I, I love that movie. I thought that movie. That was, was on. Awesome. Um, I think that one's on Max. If you have HBO Max, which I oh do. okay <laughs> okay sweet yeah maybe that's where I saw it. Um, the other ones are Sound of Metal. Uh, That's supposed to be great. Um, that is yeah. about a drummer. The drummer is played by Riz Ahmed, who is in yeah. Uh, oh yeah, from uh, from Rogue One. And Rogue One, yeah, yep. Night of Rogue One. He's the yeah. rapper and, from England. And right? Nightcrawler. He's in Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler too. If you guys yeah. have seen yeah, Nightcrawler, yeah, 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 he's yeah. awesome. He's uh, Jillian Hall's. He's Jillian Hall's uh, yeah. tweaker sidekick. Yes, yeah. the scene where Jillian Hall like interviews him for the job at the diner. I'm sorry, I'm late. Are you Richard? Ah, uh, Rick. I'm Louis Boom. Oh, hey, Lou. Louis. Sit down. The situation is that I lost an employee, and I'm interviewing for a replacement. Okay, uh, the, the ad didn't say what the job was. It's a fine opportunity for some lucky someone. Okay. I'd like to know about your prior employment and hear in your own words what you learned from each position. My old jobs. I landscaping for a couple months. Uh, like mold blow and go. You know. uh, I learned that I had hay fever, so I quit. 
Are there jobs? I don't know, like, like a week here, a week there. Why hire you? <laughs> Sell yourself. Okay. Go. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Rick, of course. Uh, I, I took three buses to get here. I finished high school. I need a job. <laughs> I'll do pretty much anything. That's me. Hi, Rick. So. What's your address, Richard? I don't have one, right? Not a permanent one, I mean, right now. You're homeless. I, I was for a while. You trick. Worked the street? No. Wasn't a question. I'm straight. Plenty of straight guys trick. Do you have a driver's license? Yeah. Do you know Los Angeles? Yeah, I grew up all around here. Can you start tonight? Doing what? <laughs> I run a successful TV news business. We film breaking stories. Maybe you saw my item this morning, you were fatal carjacking. No, I mean, I don't have a TV, but that sounds cool. I... Do you have a cell phone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does yeah. it have GPS? Yes, it does. Yeah. Congratulations, you're hired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your job will be to listen to the emergency radio, learn police codes, help navigate, and watch the car. Okay. And what does it pay? It's an internship. And I, uh, I can't do that. I, I need money, money. I'm giving you a chance to explore career options and gain insight into my organization. It's not at all unusual for me to make full-time job offers to my interns. No, I know. I just, I, I need, I, I gotta get paid, like, something at least, you know? I'll give you $30 cash per night. Okay. Okay. That is the best. So <laughs> it's such an incredible so scene. So good. Anyway, um, the other one is Mank, which is on Netflix, um, which is the story of how the guy who wrote Citizen Kane, I guess, wrote it or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm. The other one is... I'm not crazy about Citizen Kane. The, I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, I'll have to watch it again. Yeah. The other one is called Minari. Um I'm not sure what that is, but it's called Minari. Uh, the other one is called Promising Young Woman, uh, which is, what's her name? Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan. Oh, Carrie Mulligan. Doesn't she date one of the uh, the Mumfords or their son? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the other Doesn't one she is have a son with a Mumford? <laughs> hey, now. Uh <laughs> The other one is called The Father. I've never even heard of that. Um, and then the yes. last but not least is called Nomadland with Francis McDormand. Oh. Um, yeah, so Nomadland is, is, is... Speaking of marriage, she's married to a Cohen brother, I believe. That's right. Oh, um, Nomadland is, is unique. Um, so it's Francis McDormand, and she's like a, she lives in a trailer, um, and she like drives around... I don't know if she drives around the country or if she's just in a trailer park, but she drives around um, in a trailer and everyone else in the movie is actually this type of person that lives in a trailer and drives around. So like all the performances, if you're watching them and all those people are like, wow, this looks really authentic and real. That's because those people live that lifestyle. They aren't actors. <laughs> so it's like oh, a shit. really unique take oh, on how they built that movie. Yeah. Man, that's huh. wild. Where does she? Did, Francis I mean, it really made a turnaround last couple of years. Ever since Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri, that movie, that was yeah. a fucking breakout, right? Yeah. Yeah. So are are these people? I haven't seen the movie. Have you seen it, Steve? I guess not. You said you've only. I seen haven't. One. No, I've just. Yeah. I'm wondering I'm where she it, travels because I I live here in Southern California, as I have to mention. Yeah, don't every fucking episode. yeah brag about it more, <laughs> asshole. It's it's just a place to live. I don't. You you take it as a brag. I'm. It's forty and raining fucking dicks here. Okay, pal. Yeah. Fucking okay. suck. We get we get the full immersive experience on Lansdale, and I'm not allowed to mention the full the, Monty. The, Lansdale, land of freedom. The state I live in. <laughs> but anyway, you, get, you, you just get happen to mention. I can see the sun shining through your windows. All right, sorry, go. Um, we get a lot of. There's a lot of like. <laughs> I don't want to call them trailer parks because they're in like very expensive areas like Newport Beach, where uh, I lived up until like a month ago. 
and they have like they're kind of like trailer parks but they're full of like rich people that just want to live in in like those what are those like silver ones called the uh I forget what they're called, like the silver RVs, the old that's school ones. That's what these are. That's what that's what yeah. this is. These people are like living legitimate lifestyles inside of these. Bands. Yeah, like like, and these people like they're in Newport Beach. They're like wealthy people that are kind of like at retirement age, and they just don't want to live in one spot. So they have these mm -hmm. things, and like they'll live here in Southern California for a little bit, and then when the weather gets nicer, they'll like drive out to Utah or or maybe up to uh, Nevada or Colorado or whatever. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to tune into that one. I'll yeah, tune exactly in. What it is. Nice. I got the same haircut as nice. her in this, in this movie. It looks like. <laughs> nice. All right. So, okay. So, all right. Well, that was a great recommendation. So we're coming to the top of time. So, uh, so all you people out there, make sure you check out Alex Lavelle Experience Part 1 and 2. It's available on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. It's available on Spotify at The Working Perspectives Podcast. Uh, you can join us for all the fun on our socials, on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast, and on the Twitter at Working P Pod. You want to be a guest on the show and uh, try and hassle the PAAA, get some approval to get in here, then uh, go ahead and shoot us an email at workingperspectives at gmail.com. Uh, other than that, I want to say thank you to certainly not Stevie Richards for jumping on today and helping us out. And uh, Shake Diggity, anything you want to say to the peeps? No, have a good weekend, everyone. Go, go NCAA tournament. Yep. And uh, Stevie, anything you want to shout out to the dozens and dozens? Ten dozens. No, I'm okay. Thank you. Um, I, it was a pleasure to uh, to join you for the the short amount of time that I was able to join you for. This is yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully we'll have you. Hopefully we'll have you back on, pal. Yeah, so maybe, maybe in a maybe in a real life capacity. Huh? Steve. We'll Steve has on, on the big show. Steve has a world famous uh, NFL pick'em league that it, that is growing That's into a, a monster. So. For you people, I know sure. this isn't the right time of year to be promoting this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sign up now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, when when football rolls around again, uh, you know, Steve, you'll have to you'll have to give us some updates on that. Yep. Nice. I'm looking for any nice. advertising I can get. Yeah. Nice, man. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, well, uh, well, that's the uh, that's the end of once again. This was the uh, Working Perspectives podcast weekend popping. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's Tom Byers. Our guest today was our inaugural popping guest today was certainly not Stevie Richards. Uh, thanks for listening. Stick around for the ad read. All right. See you. Do you have a message or a story inside of you that you've been waiting to tell? Have you always dreamed of writing a book but are intimidated by the complexities of the book publishing world? Perhaps you want to use a book to launch your public speaking or consulting career. If so, please reach out to Scott and Bell Publishing, located right here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Scott and Bell Publishing handle all genres and authors with all experience levels. Scott and Bell Publishing gives authors 100% creative freedom and a higher royalty split. They can be found at www.skotbell.com. That's www.s is in Sam, K is in Kite, O is in October, E is in Tom, B is in Boy, E is in Edward, L is in Larry, L is in Larry.com. That's Scott and Bell Publishing, where the authors go.